points, but went right back down again. Uh, why? Because the markets look at the leadership we have in America and they don't see any. They don't see someone there who's willing to step up and, and take this country and do what is necessary to fix the problems. The problem is what everybody in this country and the market knows is the problem, which is government is spending way beyond its means, is not what Barack Obama thinks the problem is. Barack Obama believes the problem is we're not taxing you enough and we're not spending enough. It's really quite remarkable that if you, uh, what, if you read his advisors, what his economic advisors, and you would then believe he believes. And uh, I was watching John Kerry the other day on TV. The answer to the, to the, to the problem that faces this country with the economy, in their mind, is spend more money. That the initial stimulus didn't work, not because it didn't work, it's because it wasn't big enough. And so uh, we're, we, uh, I think most of most uh, folks who are going to be voting in the Republican primary look at this and say the most important thing we have to do is find a candidate that can actually defeat Barack Obama to put this country uh, on a different footing. So I would say that, that would be order one because, of course, if you can't win, then all the other things that the candidate wants to accomplish doesn't really mean a lot, does it? So secondly, they, I think they want someone who has a positive vision for the country. People say, we're looking for another Ronald Reagan. Well, I, I think what they're looking for is someone who's a leader, uh, who's willing to go out and, and communicate unabashedly, unapologetically, uh, what uh, conservatism is, and what it stands for, who we are as Americans. Because conservatism is, I, I wrote a book called It Takes a Family, Conservatism and the Common Good, and I define conservatism as the stewardship of patrimony. In other words, we're stewardship of the inheritance that we've been given. That's what conservatives believe that we are to be good stewards of the gifts that we've been given. And the gifts that America has been given are unique in the world. And uh, we have leaders who sometimes don't believe that. Leaders who, even some who are in the conservative movement, who don't take the time to step back and explain to the American public how unique America really is. What makes us special, what makes us great, is the fact that we are a country that for the first time in human history believed that rights came from a creator directly to each one of you and your ancestors individually, equally. That was the, the big revolutionary moment. That was the changing point, the inflection point in the history of the world. It was America recognizing sovereign, a sovereign God in, in the founding document of our country, which is the soul of our country. Declaration of Independence, the why of our country. I know there may be some Tea Party here, folks, who I respect a lot, but if you just run around talking about the Constitution, you're not talking about, you're talking about the document that is the how of America. How do you do this? But you can't talk about how unless you know what you're talking about. What, what do you want to, what, what, what is at the core of who we are? That's in the Declaration of Independence. Declaration of Independence talks about we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and endowed by our created with certain inalienable rights. God appears four times in the Declaration of Independence in four different ways. One is divine providence. The other is nature and nature is God. And then I think it's the supreme ju judge. And then of course creator. So at the, at the heart of America who we are is a moral enterprise. Rights given to us by God. We talk about governed by the consent of the governed. But the rights, the power of that comes from our Creator. Why is that important? 